Hello, I guess Falcha Bla or of Gutri Shasket. In program at BBC Alba, I had all good Cree Skilk and Boronik Ingentach and a sales force in Halibur. As Mishayona Ballantyne, I guess Hamitolacherira, Gavalskipper Hibernia and Joel Murray, a rash call rooms in studio. We thought it all, Shona had a heen at a program in Och. Get the hash season in SWP on the Tav, ha click it in Ure Shir heen a shach. Clunishin von Neve finally, and gonna click it in Ure at Glasgow City. Agus Hamir Mulroy Glan, Gavan Lu Classici Olympicoch, Eli Doyle Akri Noch Kuchoch, a broom again a behe er in track. Welcome back, Joel. Now, under very different circumstances this week, because the first time you were on, we just had the opening weekend of the SWPL. And this time, I mean, it's been suspended. How has it been for you? Yeah, very different circumstances indeed. Um, for me, the suspension was the correct decision, in my opinion. Um, as a club, we felt very strongly that the league should be suspended and postponed because we, and I know a lot, if not all of the, the other clubs in the, the league, we, we only um, complete a, a COVID questionnaire and a temperature check. So to be continuing with the league and, and travelling about the country based on, on that being correct, um, I think in my opinion would, would be irresponsible. So um, yeah, I, I think the, the, the correct decision in the end. And for me, um, it's probably beneficial. Before Christmas, I tore my calf, which meant I missed a, a few games, um, which was frustrating. So the suspension for me personally allows me more time to recover and, and hopefully be back fit for when we, we resume. Were you quite relieved then when you heard the news, which did come as a shock to many? I think so, yes. Um, the senior players at the club, myself and Rachel Boyle and a, a few others, we were discussing um, the situation and we, we kind of raised our concerns with um, our general manager um, and they as a, a staff were, were all under the, the same impression and, and had the same concerns. So yeah, it was, it was a bit of a relief because I mean, we as players can make a decision to take ourselves out of that environment if we don't feel safe, but for me doing that, I would have felt I was letting my team down. So the onus or, or that decision as such to be taken out with our hands, I think was, was the best thing for, for all. What is the plan of action now? What do things look like as a player with Hibernian? So at the moment, we, we of course can, can't train. Um, there's, there's no contact, there's no pitch time. So we've got a, an online delivery. So we've got running sessions, we've got yoga sessions, we've got just a general catch up session because I think through this period of lockdown, um, I think it's important to retain that engagement, whether it be uh, a session whereby we're running or staying active or even just a, a general catch up um, and for people to check in. So we've got that constant, um, we've got that constant kind of contact, which is fantastic. Do you feel like things are a wee bit different this time round? I mean, I remember with the first lockdown, it was kind of new, it was exciting. People had all this time. It was the summer, the weather was good. People were happy to do all these Zoom workouts and sessions. But I mean, it does feel very different this time. And a lot of people are maybe lacking motivation. Have you found that within the squad? Not personally. Um, I think the squad are good at kind of checking in individually so I'll maybe check in with players who um, the last lockdown maybe struggled so I'll, I'll certainly do that myself but as a squad I think morale's high we, we had a yoga session on um, on Monday night and there was a, a good participation during that and we've got another session on, on Sunday so everyone seems to be um, in good spirits and, and hopefully that can continue until we, we can get back on the pitch. Oh, good well that is good to hear but one thing we do need to talk about is the Scotland squad I mean there is a vacant manager position at the moment Shelley Kerr left just before Christmas who do you think should be taken over? I know there's been a few names kind of bandied about. Um, for me, it needs to be someone with, with that experience. I think it needs to be someone with, um, that's personable, that has that relationship and can relate to players um, as a collective, but also as individuals. So um, hopefully we can get the, the right person in, male or female. I don't think there is a preference there. Um, the right person in and if it is before these these last two games um, it, it kind of gives that person a flavour and an indication of 
of what the environment's like and, and, and kind of the, the ability and quality within the squad. So, so yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to hope that whoever comes in is someone with experience and has those types of attributes and qualities. The squad does come on so much. I mean, it was such a, a great experience with World Cup qualification. The squad just now, how do you think they stand? I think it's frustrating in the sense that we went from qualifying for the Euros in 2017, we then on the back of that qualified for the World Cup in 2019. So the squad that we've got at the moment is probably the strongest, but we didn't qualify, which probably doesn't make sense. Um, so I do think we can pick ourselves up. There are leaders in, in that squad that, that can do that. And I'd like to think that as I say, if we get someone in before these two games, we can finish the group on a high and then take that into the, the next qualification process. Like you say, there are these two games. What do the, what does Scotland need to do now? What How can they use this time with these two games, which are dead rubbers? Yeah, I think, like I said, I think it, it, anyone coming in, um, if they do come in before those two games, it gives them the opportunity to get a feel for the environment. Um, kind of get to know the players and likewise the players get to know them so I, I do think albeit there's nothing to play for I do think it is important that the appointment is made before the games or before the last game essentially because there's nothing to play for so the coach or whomever comes in can maybe try things try different formations try different players so I think there is opportunities there and probably an opportunity to turn a negative situation into a positive. Absolutely. Well, it will be very interesting to see who does take the reins. Hi, then. And Dully Haglusa Good Club Ur, Acha Fisnach Roy Ri of Chodar of Sahai, and Chesme in Pandemic. French and Rini Farrelly, as Jeggy Glusset, will skip it Erenach Pimat United, Good Glasgow City. Shewi and Glues at Morek ni Faralika Klasago. Katud and click at the Toshak Toshaki of a Furistigi. A Shewi and Nerf from Realtus, Nakchit Gemikin and Estuary Pella Dirt, Marpoko. Obviously, when I came over, we were we were still training. Um, I got to meet all the girls, which was which was good, and we had a good a good first intense week back. Um, and then obviously when it when it closed up, that was disappointing. But um I've been working hard obviously um on my own. Well, I'm in an apartment with uh, Shea. So um, it's good having another player um, here, and I suppose we can we can do a bit of training together and stuff. So uh, that side of it is good too. We've been given um, where we have the sports scientist gives us an app, and we're on the app. So like we have sessions to do. Um, so it's either in my sitting room here or it's out in the local park, and um, we've got a few balls off the club too. So just to, to help keep keep up the fitness and um, it's hard like but look it's not much that I'm not used to because obviously we sp I've spent so much time in a lockdown in Ireland and um, training on my own and stuff so it's, it's kind of surreal that we're back into that again but look what can you do and um, you can't control these things so we did actually get our full season in though and um, over in Ireland which was was, which was really good and um, we finished up in December but then from there on it went into complete lockdown so look if I was at home I'd be doing the same thing as well anyway so it's kind of the same the same difference. Haniv mar fars du vuyen ha ulus an nun tayuchug nis gavil grun chlicht ar an ure er china stay gan skipper ag scott booth. When I came in on my first training session I wasn't the, the only newbie uh, so there was obviously there was a few um, which is good and for me obviously to settle because you're not kind of on your own um, but um, yeah no definitely and I think that first week that we had it's so annoying that we're going into lockdown because the first week that we had we was things were going good people were getting to know each other and um, it takes time you know like um, fair enough one or two players but five new players coming into it to a squad it takes time to um, to know I suppose what the players attributes are and stuff and how you communicate we're all I know we're, we can we can all speak English but there still is language barriers and um, they're like on how people communicate in the pit, on the pitch off the pitch as well so and um, the only time you're going to improve on that is I suppose uh, time together which we don't have now but 
please God soon we'll be back. Um, but definitely, yeah, it's um, it's definitely an exciting time for 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 the team, and um, and hopefully we can get going soon. I shall be going to the Champions League call of the P Mount United. Glach can click at the red and can carm click at call of the city. No, the knock yet. Let you not profession there. When I was younger, I didn't think it would be possible, um, because I suppose there wasn't that many professional footballer um on the women's in the women's game, but. Seeing a lot of the Irish girls, especially, um, taking that trip overseas um, to play professional, it just became more and more of an aim then as, as the years went on. And yeah, it was kind of a surreal moment that I, that when it happened. And it was really weird um, the way it kind of planned out, but it was lucky. Um, obviously, when I came over to play them, I had no intention of, of, um, of going to play pro, I suppose, in um, this year. But well, it was always in the back of my head, but I'm I'm studying at the minute, so um, I was that was in the back of my head to to make the decision. But obviously, when um when I got the opportunity and they came and they got in contact after the game, I said like I couldn't really let let it slip, and I had to uh, I had to go for it. It's a dream come true, and I'm just excited to uh, to see where the professional game takes me. I shall we pick and carry the coach in a click at the a click as a click has the city. Bekaguna Gama Furusta Evan Deneed of the Oclusat Guglasaku. I'd be good friends with, with Tyler. Um, I used to room with Tyler um, in some of the international camps um, a few years ago. And then obviously Claire Shine too, she, she's Irish. Um, so yeah, and obviously before I came then I had, um, I was talking to the likes of like Denise O'Sullivan and Katie McCabe who had experience playing for Glasgow too. So it was good to get everyone's kind of experiences of it and stuff like that. And, um, I knew more what to expect when when you can talk to people that you know. Obviously, when uh, when there's Irish people around, it's it's easier. Um, because obviously, and as well when you know people, um, it's easier to settle in. Um, and I know what the quality of that Claire Shine has and that Tyler has. Um, and if they, I knew if they were enjoying it, that that I definitely enjoy it too. Let's get the hoodie shaka to borrow it. Jake Blee and a call of the P mode. I was quite emotional leaving, um, but look, it, you have you have to move on, um, and I suppose like I had I had so much great memories and so much great years there, um, like going from from under 11s all the way up to senior level, and like even when I was talking to to the team when I was leaving, I was saying when I was under 11 and under 12, I used to. I used to look at like the likes of Stephanie Roach and stuff, and they'd walk by our training onto the onto the pitch to to train with the senior team, and I'd be like, if I ever got there one day, I'd love it. And then I did get there and have the success that I did to represent them in Champions League. And um, it just and we then obviously finishing off on the double, it was kind of a, it was kind of a sweet ending. I didn't actually I didn't actually realise, but when when we did do it, that um, it was up on social media that it's actually it was actually the first time that P Mount did it. Um I, I didn't realise that, which was which is huge for the club. But um yeah, definitely and for especially that cup was hanging over us for uh, we lost the previous two finals. So to to really just go and finish everything off, it was it was a great ending and to to help the club to success, that's all I really wanted in the end. Yeah. Obviously I'm gutted that I'm, that I'm gone, but I'll I'll still be a P supporter forever. Shepliana Idley ha Idmiant and click at their GM. Agus hai in dochus gilen an service in kuchoch call of the Glasgow City. Most years at the end of the year I look back and I'm like, wow, that was some year. I'll never top that next year. And then it just seems to it seems to get better. Um, obviously like last if it was 2019, um, I'd never think that that by the next year I'd already signed a professional contract. So um, hopefully the hopefully it keeps going like that and um, I can just progress and keep going. Obviously, this this team is is has been so successful in the past, and I want to keep that mindset. Um, me coming into the team, I, I I'm a winner, and I want um, I want this team to do well, and hopefully we can we can get some silverware um, this year and, and next. Um, so yeah, please God, and then obviously playing at a higher standard, a professional level. Um, please God, then I'll uh, I'll push on to get um, get more international caps. Let's give a little Hakalyor Unyak Neve Hast, Agas Hayed Virin, Kus Korm Kleichang, with the Hikas and SW Pilla Dash at the ish. To be honest, I only realised how young I was until when I came over here and I was chatting to some of the girls and they were uh, they were they were telling me um 
then even the new girls like their age like I still I still think I'm 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 old but I'm not old I'm I'm still uh, young so loads of times ago and um, seeing people still playing like in their thirties like I just hope that my legs will be still able to run at that stage but um yeah it's exciting and I can't wait to get going now um obviously it's 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 annoying um how it panned out with the with the start of the league being um, postponed but look as I said like we can't control it so I'll be ready when when the time comes. Joel, that's quite a big move for Neve, especially after being with Piedmont United for so long. I suppose that's something you can relate to, having been with Hibernian most of your career. Yeah, of course. I was I was actually watching the BT there, thinking, wow, that that could have been me um, a few times. But yeah, all credit to her. She's moved on from the club that she's played for for all of her career um, to to try and better herself, and all all credit to her. And for Glasgow City, they did really need to bring players and especially after losing so many throughout the season. Yeah, they definitely did. Um, the girls that, that left for, for Rangers in, in December was always going to be a blow and I think Scott knew that he would need to replace them and I think bringing in Neve is a fantastic signing. Um, Glasgow City have got a um, previous track record of bringing in top talents from, from Ireland, um, notably Denise O'Sullivan and Katie McCabe and um, obviously Claire Shine who's who's still at the club so I think Neve will be a, a fantastic asset and a, a position that that Glasgow City need to be kind of filled and um, you've got quality players playing there but players that like Joe Love who's essentially a central midfielder and, and Leanne Ross who's played majority of the last season or two at, at fullback, so a position that um, they've been looking to strengthen for a while, and I'm no doubt that uh, Neve will be a fantastic asset to the club. Well, you played Glasgow City before the winter break. It was a 3-2 defeat, but it was a great game to watch. I mean, how was it to play in? Um, as always, it was a tough game to play in. Um, the games between Hibs and Glasgow City are always tough, very competitive and, and always close. Um, Glasgow City got a lead um, quite quite early on and then they, they built on that but we showed what we always show that you can never write us off and we played up until the very last minute and it was just unfortunate that there wasn't any any longer or much more time because I think if, if there was we could have kind of snuck a draw. As a player how different does the league feel this year? It feels different in the sense that from a club a Hibernian perspective, obviously we've, we've went through a lot of transition on and off the pitch and we knew that this year, for a number of reasons, would be a transitional and different year. Um, but from an overall league perspective, I think it's great that there now is that competitiveness. You've got teams beating each other week in, week out. And um, although Rangers are sitting at the top at the moment, um, I think you'll see that change if and when we do get back to, to league business. So yeah, from a, a kind of overall league perspective, it's, it's different in the sense that there's a lot more competitiveness and I think you're seeing quality players being brought to the league from, from different leagues down south and out with and that speaks volumes, um, uh, I think. Well, like you say, it has been a trans transitional um, season for Hibernian. Some of the res results maybe haven't gone your way. What's the mood been like in training and, and during games? Yeah, I think we've got a fantastic environment at, at Hibernian. We, we always have. We've, we've always been known for that. And even though, of course, we're disappointed um, and we have been disappointed on the back of the, the defeats this season, we're very good at picking ourselves up, kind of regrouping and, and, and refocusing. Um, we are a tight-knit team and we support each other. So um, for me, it's great to see as a captain because the onus isn't just on me. I've got teammates that, that can help and do that along with me. So yeah, although we've we've had a few defeats and a couple of hard ones, um, hard ones to take, we've, we've done well to, to quickly refocus and kind of look to the next game. You have also added to the squad, you've got Katie Rice coming in from Motherwell. Are you excited to have her part of the team? Yeah, I think she'll be a, a great addition. She's a left-footed player, which um, I think we've maybe got one or two, if that, within the squad at the moment. So she'll bring a different dimension to the team. Um, she can play in a couple of different positions, which is which is always great. So just looking forward to, to getting um, back on the training pitch and, and, and integrating Katie into the squad. 
As a squad, what will your kind of main focus be for the next half of the season? Hopefully, if it resumes, what will you be working on? Yeah, I think we've got another, hopefully, two rounds of fixtures. Um, and I think we'll take um, small chunks. So we'll look at the, the next round and we'll want to be better than the first round. So that's more points, um, more clean sheets, um, more goals, better performances, because there's been games where we won, but we probably didn't perform um, as good as we could. So yeah, we'd just be looking to, to build on round one fixtures, um, beat that and then take that into round three. And as we were talking about earlier, just kind of with the pandemic and everything that's going on, there has been, of course, a lot of uncertainty within the league. And just this week, we've seen for, for Farmington head coach Ryan McConville leave the club. Do you think we'll see more of that going ahead? I think so. Obviously, when you're signing players on contracts for a certain length of time, there was no way we could have foreseen COVID and lockdowns and league extensions or postponements. So, yeah, I think I think there will be a lot of that. Um, there'll be a lot of that maybe due to personal reasons or contracts expiring and there maybe not being the finances there to, to renew. So, yeah, I don't think that'll be the last um, as we, we, we see the season go on. How confident are you kind of as a player and that the season will continue and we will get it to a close? I am confident. I think we will get it to a close. However, I'm not sure if we will be able to fulfil those next two rounds of fixtures um, just because you're then potentially running into the time set aside for next season. Um, you need to look at Champions League dates and structures. So there are a lot of variables that need to be taken into consideration. So I do think we'll finish it, but it might be an even shorter season than, than we'd expected. All right, thank you. And Talmanish, a clinching von Lukas, he albanach a servachal a vounriev. Ha eli doil er bunigle, a gaimak in Olympicoch agis kolahish. Bruni ritri shesket, mundriach ur ingentach eke, agis hairegra, na kelly jishal hast. A shewigi toshaga gamach mar hitcher, haro luch lisi hi alapanach eli doil, and dul driach luch lisa kalentai. When I was younger, I'd, I'd, I'd won quite a few races and I always kind of thought this is something I'm pretty good at. Um, and, you know, you have those dreams of being an Olympic athlete um, or, you know, competing for your country, but you don't really understand the what that takes, you know, the dedication, the hard work. You have a kind of, you know, uh, you kind of see it in this kind of dreamlike fantasy kind of way. Um, and it probably wasn't until I was a bit older um, that the reality of of actually yeah okay I, I, can't, I can maybe do this more seriously and I, I don't think I really kind of felt I could do it as a career until I did and I was 22 when I kind of became a full-time athlete I'd kind of done my degree at university I'd worked as a teacher for a couple of years and then it wasn't probably until I actually left my job and went and trained full-time that I thought actually this is what I'm doing now as my job. The three being a game you can call is the hoshing. I miss more like Eli Alaparukka who like kind of can snuck when the GFF person. I remember my first Commonwealth Games was back in 2010 and it was in Delhi and you know I remember going away there it was the sort of the furthest I'd ever travelled and kind of being there with this tight-knit group of the Team Scotland athletes um, and just getting on so well and just kind of all bonding you know being away at the championships and that kind of yeah it's always kind of stuck with me at these Commonwealth Games as the kind of the, the, the team spirit and the you know just just the intimacy of being Team Scotland and um, yeah it's something that I've, I've I love doing and, and I've been really proud to kind of go and compete at three different Commonwealth Games and obviously I got to carry the flag in 2018 and that was a massive honour so yeah the Commonwealth Games is it's had a special place in my heart you know for championships. Glasgow was very different in terms of kind of pressure and attention and um, you know that's something I'd never experienced before at all within athletics and um, I think just because we were Scottish athletes I think in any sport um, if you were Scottish there was a different level of attention on you and there was a different level of sort of um, pressure and expectation um, but Glasgow just seemed to just put on this amazing kind of games it was just huge and I think for me to be able to to go and win a medal was fantastic, but the thing I'll take from Glasgow was the lap of honour. I think being able to run a lap of honour in front of a, a home crowd like that at Hamden was just incredible. And 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 then to then go on two weeks later and, and actually win, you know, the Europeans and be able to kind of stand on the podium on that, you know, top top spot. Um, 
it was just the icing on the cake for me for that year. It was just so special. There was a lot of a lot of pressure and when it was over I was relieved it was over and I was relieved it had gone well but uh, now I can look back at it and really kind of enjoy it for, for, for what it was. The fact was really good to meet her. I was really happy to meet her and I came to the Olympics on the day of the year. She had a lot of fun and a lot of fun in the world. The Olympic medal is, is probably my most special medal just because that is the, the medal that you dream of as a child. You know, you, you kind of dream of winning, of going to the Olympic Games, of representing your country but to, to actually have an Olympic medal um, means the world to me and Rio was such a yeah such a special occasion I had a really good season that year you know I'd been running really well I'd been running PBs and and I'd ran a good race in the hurdles but I didn't you know I hadn't done enough to to make the podium so I think to then run the four by four really get another chance to kind of go out there and try and win a medal and, and get that medal it just kind of yeah it was it's such a special medal for me but it kind of encompasses the whole season rather than just that Olymp you know that Olympic performance it kind of brings all of 2016 and, and that kind of season for me into you know that kind of actual medal that I could hold and say I achieved this and, and that was that was the one medal kind of missing from my collection uh, bef at that stage you know I had world medals I had Commonwealth medals I had European medals um, and that was the one that kind of eluded me so to kind of get that and kind of com complete the collection um, was just was massive and I was yeah it was, it was such a such a moment you know just and the response as well you know I didn't expect it you know, I, I would go and visit schools and things like that and it's, you know you take your Commonwealth medals and your, and your, your world medals um, but there's something different about an Olympic medal you know when you take that into school and people see it it's you know it's a different reaction and, and yeah it's, it's, it's really nice to kind of have those moments and, and share that with everybody. I'm going to talk to you about the three years but I'm going to talk to you about the three years that I'm going to talk to you about. You get these little accolades like that along the way that you never really dream about you know like I say when you're younger you dream about competing for your country or competing in Olympic Games but you never think about things like you know the medals that you're going to accumulate and and to me I've always just ran because I love it you know I've always just gone to champs and I've never gone into champs planning to win medals I've never gone to that champs thinking right I'm, I'm only going to be happy if I come away with this color of medal or, or that amount of medals I've always gone into champs and thought right I want to go here and perform my best and thankfully and luckily that's always meant I come away with a medal you know of some sort so um yeah it's it's something that I can probably look back on now that I'm coming towards the end of my career that I can say well this is this is you know to have this collection of medals is is amazing this is things I can now show you know my son and and these are the, these are things that I can kind of keep hold of and, and can, can be passed down um but yeah it's something I'm I didn't think I would achieve that I never really thought about but I'm, I'm massively proud of them Les a dove is jimmis e lu place a cast. Ha ilian is a gamish it's part for shake three gamish and olympic och on the street. I'm still really enjoying kind of training and um, and not so much competing because obviously it's been a funny kind of you know year and I've always I've been off as well having a baby so it's been a couple of years since I've I've raced um, but my love for it and, and passion is still there so I'd like to still be able to compete again I'm, I'm still training pretty hard um, and yeah hoping that there'll be some kind of season again that'll happen this year that I'll be able to to, to race again um, and yeah and just hopefully you keep going as long as I'm enjoying it um, I'm hoping there'll be the Olympics this year that I'll will target and try and be part of that team um, and I think that'd be nice because that'd be my third Olympics so to make a, a, a third consecutive Olympics would be would be something special so that would be a, a big target of mine this year. Joelle, I don't know about you, but some of those stories and pictures gave me goosebumps. And the thing is, a sporting career can be so short, but what Ailey's achieved in that time is amazing. Yeah, it certainly is. It's, it's incredible and it's incredible, albeit brief, to, to hear a little bit about our, our career and our journey and the fact that she's targeting a, a third Olympics, especially on the back of a, kind of a pregnancy, is, is a rem remarkable achievement. And especially, I mean, she spoke about when she was younger, she didn't think a career in athletics was something that she could even have. Did, do you relate to that when you were younger? Did you ever see yourself having a career like you've had in football? Yeah, I can certainly relate. Um, when I was younger, I just played football because I loved it and didn't even think beyond that day or that week. So I can certainly relate to, to that. And uh, as we s spoke about there, she's had a, an incredible career and one she'll look back on fondly. Like you mentioned before, and, and as Ellie did say, she's targeting the Olympics. And coming back to that after having a baby, I mean, you've got teammates in Hibs who have children who have kind of come away from football had their baby and then come back. We've spoken about it so many times on the show, but it's amazing that the female body can do that. Yeah, of course. Um, I've got 
I think three notably is obviously Rachel Small, um, Suzanne Grant and, and Julie Fleeting who've all done that and went through that process and not only just done it but they've came back and they've came back and played at the, the top of their game so um, it just shows you that, that it can be done. And like we also saw there, which is emotional to see but the feeling of winning in a stadium with fans, I mean we mm. haven't seen that in so long, are you missing it? Yeah, I think I think we're all missing it. That that atmosphere. They they talk about the twelfth person um, at, at a football game, and um, we're certainly all missing it. And and just seeing those images, um, it just makes you miss it even more. So hopefully we can get back to that sometime soon. And Ailey also spoke about the Commonwealth Games and Glasgow having a very special place in her heart, and how she feels about her Olympic medal. What would be your equivalent? Um, probably playing Champions League games at Easter Road or playing home national team games, there's always that added pressure, um, whether it be from uh, an external source or internally, um, there's always that added pressure and that kind of want and willingness to, to do well and succeed. What goals have you still got in mind for your career going ahead? Um, for me, I, I just want to to play as long as I can um, and I'll do that um, up until I, I feel like I can give everything that I've given previously so for me it's just kind of finishing my career fit and healthy um, anything over and above that is a bonus. Fit and healthy and hopefully with fans back in the stadium too. Hopefully with fans to watch me do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, she now is on programme Ayla, my hang for the Joel or Sonavi Caller Room in studio. For the Shiver Lantel Gach Shaki on our YouTube, Marcia and Janky Jock and Eve Shave Cavella Court of Rave, and Misha for Lantel, I guess not Kalshu programmes and B. Kinaka Gresha on programme Akavshe, Marcia and Skelvin, they are fat as farshing, I guess Kimavot of a quiet. But Daki Spores for a knock the halibut, Marcia and Live in the Rast. <laughs>